right, here we go. Another best of five. And, uh, once again, thank you guys for being here and bearing with me today with my, uh, solo, the solo game of mine today with the casting and the production and all that. But even as I do say that, I'm not alone here at all in running Fight Night today. Not close. Uh, management team at Team Gravity has done an amazing job in uh, helping me uh, with, you know, I mean, well, actually not even helping me. They're, they're just, they're actually the biggest reason why this event is going on because they're the ones who are putting it together. And, of course, we can't forget about uh, Fight Night uh, being sponsored by Hitbox.tv uh, with the prize pool and everything. And really a great streaming service as well. And uh, even something like the videos that we've been seeing, guys, uh, those are all done by uh, our good friend Cybert, who is involved in video production and has been putting together some really professional-looking player cards and things for us, too. So uh, big thanks big thanks to all those people. And uh, let's move in here now to this best of five here for another 10 bucks. It's going to be starting on Overgrowth LE here, game number one to be exact. And uh, ooh, we have a nice choice of colors from these guys. I always get bored from blue and red. That's always just so standard, and we see that in every single game, every ladder matchup. But uh, I like teal. I like green. Let's uh, let's see who is which. It's going to be a TVZ this time around, guys, for this second match. Let's introduce the players. So we do have here at the top right-hand side of Overgrowth LE here for game number one. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Overgrowth, popular map, uh, a classic that's been around for a few seasons now. And it's no surprise to me that these players have settled on this as the game one uh, venue of choice. So yes, we do have here the Australian Zerg streaming sensation, guys, and a former member of Root Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have here Fenner. And against Fenner is going to be the Terran on the bottom left-hand side. And this guy, I, I think in the earlier years of StarCraft, he was a huge, huge caster, uh, casting in a lot of events. But then he took a break, and I think he played some other games. League of Legends, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But in the last few months, he has made his return with this season, in fact, uh, WCS Season 1 of 2015. He came back, and it is just a great, great, a, a great thing for the SC community because really, the game's getting a little older these days, not as popular as before, and we can use all the help that we can get. Having this guy back is really just uh, exactly what the doctor ordered, and I'm glad to see him here uh, playing in Team Gravity Fight Night. So. Yeah, spawning on the lower left in the green trunks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Grey Torp. And look at that player card, guys. Not only is it a picture, it is a moving picture. There is a video <laughs> as a part of that player card. And that's amazing work, again, done by uh, the aforementioned Cybert, who have also... Uh, had the pleasure of co-casting with for a few times so big thanks to him for uh, these awesome production values that he's allowing us to have here as a part of fight night and uh, we're gonna have a scout here from Grey Torp just moving around there in the main base SCV gonna gonna bite the dust I mean it was pretty much already dead and then the second queen made sure of it on the bottom so uh, but Grey Torp of course did see all that he needed to scouted the pull timing scouted that there's no gas right absolutely no gas out of fender means that he wants to whatever he plans on defending against Terran, he's going to want to do it with mostly queens early on we have multiple queens coming out of the dude speedling's not something he uh really is thinking about now interesting thing on gray torp's part is that his opening was with an scv scout and it's because he had no Reapers coming to, uh, to really do any harassment or scouting. He's just trying to go straight into his tech here with the factory and the reactor. And starting to pump out double Hellions immediately. So just uh, wanting to, you know, save some of that gas on that Reaper and go for this instead. He's got a third CC going for him as well here in the natural. Now a lot of times I see players, when they go for that five minute third CC... They usually preface it with a nice uh, a nice Reaper harassment, right? Three Reapers. 
generally what they go for. And they go for that more so than make Hellions at the earlier time, the slightly earlier time that Greatorp's making them. So it's a trade-off here. Greatorp deciding to go with Hellions a little bit earlier than someone who opens with three Reaper. He's got two right now. He's going to have another two coming out shortly. And Fenner right now, interestingly, going to take the lower third position here. Not the one on the left. Greatorp will be able to scout it. He has had two, two Hellions going at it right now. We have a wall here from Fenner popping. Roach Warren, double evolution chamber as well. Gonna plug the hole with the queen, so really no hope of these Hellions quite getting in there. And to stop these Hellions from poking at this hatchery and lowering its health ever so slightly, we got three queens out here from Fenner ready to handle them. So Fenner now going into lair. He's got the gases now uh, basically saturated, fully saturated on all four in his first two bases. Greatorp going to look again to try to do an harassment. He's got quite a few Hellions here now, but oh my gosh, they're going to actually sneak in through this. There's two gaps in this wall, guys. And these Hellions are to get into the natural. Oh my goodness. Fenner, all his queens are trying to get back in here to defend against this, and Greatorp is doing something that I have absolutely not expected. Getting every Hellion in here and just roasting everything in sight. 21 workers killed by Greatorp. And that number's only going to increase further as these queens are now walking off creep once again back into the main base. Greatorp is just torching everything in sight. And these roaches are now finally popping, but not many drones to defend anymore in this, in this main base. And just like that, it's GG. Greatorp snuck in there. Fenner moving all of his, all of his, uh, uh those queens out. <laughs> Couldn't even come up with the words to describe what just happened here. Greatorp, seeing all those those queens removed outside into that third, he's like, "I'm gonna see if I can get into your natural. If your hole, if there's a hole, if there isn't a, if there's a hole in your wall, I'm gonna see if I can get my Hellions into your natural. Because your queens are gonna take forever to come back. And there was a hole. There was one hole that was blocked, but there was a second one. And because of that." Kane just lost everything, or Kane Fenner just lost everything. Man, I'm just really uh, going nuts here. But yeah, that was a a very strong, strong Hellion push there by Greatorp. So we're gonna move into game number two now. Uh, Vani Research Station is gonna be the map of choice here by Fenner. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. And uh, that was a lot of Hellions from Greatorp. I will say that. Uh, he did open 3cc, but he also just stayed really on that factory for quite a while. Didn't add on a starport to try to bring in an extra dimension to that timing. So that's kind of where we do see uh, Fender perhaps a little surprised. But ultimately, man, it just has to come down to that wall. And Fender's going to need to do a better job of shoring things up uh, going forward here, starting with game two. Alright, so we'll get into this right here. Game number two. The lead right now is 1-0 uh, for, for Grey Torp. So, uh, yeah, let's get into things very shortly. Game number two. It's happening on Vani Research Station. The lead right now is indeed one to zero in Grey Torp's favor. And uh, we're going to talk about the other player, though, who's probably going to look to try to even things up here. And yeah, uh, I did notice in chat somebody wasn't aware who Fenner was. Let me tell you, Fenner is a very popular streamer, uh, as Grey Torp is mentioning here in chat. Uh, he's congratulating Fenner on recently achieving featured status for his stream on Team Liquid. And uh, I don't remember exactly what his link is, but maybe someone can make it known in the chat uh, here on Hitbox. But yeah, Fenner is a Zerg streamer out of Australia, formerly player uh, playing for Root Gaming. And he has a pretty good stream. Uh, I mean, he's not the greatest player ever, obviously. Just, you know, he's not Korean or whatever. But... He's a great personality. He gives a lot of good commentary when he plays. And he's still, you know, a Grandmaster level player. So he's got some good insights on things as far as game theory and whatnot. So it's good 
uh, to hear somebody kind of talking while they're playing too and explaining what's going on. So uh, he's definitely a good guy to to follow on Twitch and whatnot. So great to have him here. Uh, hopefully for his sake, he'll be able to uh, stabilize here in game two and uh, put up a bit a better fight here. So yeah, he is the the teal zerg spawning at the very top of Vani Research Station, guys. It is Fenner. And against him is going to be a player that just had a very, very fantastic barbecue last game, man. Those Hellions just snuck in there. Queen so far out of position. And he was just able to uh, really just snack on some barbecue drones. And I've never personally had those, but if you ever played Irish Chef, guys, we'll I'll talk about that in a sec. But yeah, it, this is uh, this is gonna be the Green Terran Grey Torp. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> and uh, if you guys ever played Irish Chef, Irish Chef, right? Ire as in the planet Ire uh, for Protoss, right? In the StarCraft lore, and that's it's a play on Iron Chef, the cooking competition you are basically trying to engage in a cooking competition against other players this is an arcade game by the way and uh they, they have such funny names for all the different food items you could have i've seen like fried muta wings uh there's templar butter i don't even understand that reference but uh yeah there's like barbecue drones in there it's uh it's pretty amusing but uh, and you can also get that portrait too by the way uh, of the zealot chef so it's kind of funny anyways we have an scv scout once again for gray torp seems like this guy is not the biggest fan of reaper openings i've seen i just saw him finish up with a marine at home immediately putting all the gas mined into a factory so i don't know why gray torp doesn't like to go reapers maybe now i can tell you why i don't like to go reapers okay i play every race i'm not the greatest player so when i play terran I actually like to open up one Rax Expo because I know my Reaper Micro sucks. All right, I'm just bound to lose it. And no player wants to lose their Reaper, right? For obvious reasons. Now, I'm not saying that's why Gray Torp doesn't like to open Reaper. For all I know, he could be the greatest Reaper Micro in the world. And uh, I don't want to imply that he's not. But sometimes players won't just don't want to bother with it. They might just find it too much of a hassle. It's easier to just save that 100 gas and get earlier Hellions. So I can see that being a, a very big possibility here as Grey Torp now is going to be swapping places onto that reactor. He's got the expansion, of course, up and running. In the meantime, Fenner also with his expansion up and running and starting to get both gases on his natural. So, you know, last game he opened up gasless much like he has now. And the idea always is to get out more queens to defend. But the trick is your queens have to be where they need to be to defend. They were in last game. Now this time around though, I will say this. Um, so defending Vani is in many ways a lot more straightforward just because of your natural kind of being in that backwards position, right? That's an in-base natural. You have most of your stuff going on in the front where the main is, where there's really a, a small choke that you have to plug. It's not the same for overgrowth, right? Your your choke between the natural and the rest of the map is fairly large. So you gotta build buildings, you gotta plug multiple places here. Just these just two queens here is actually enough to do the job. But actually we're gonna see Fenner uh, play it even safer by throwing up some additional buildings here uh, to form a wall. And it's gonna be two evolution chambers at a roach war. Not one guys, but two evolution chambers. So he is probably going to commit to some kind of ground attack timing, I'd have to say. He's got the lair going right now. Uh, we'll see if it's going to be Roach. Because, yeah, it is Roach. He's got a Roach one right here by 80% done. Great Torp, in the meantime, he's been working on his Hellions for a bit now. So he's seen it fit here to move out with about six. And they're making their way towards the top right here over to the third base of him. I'm going to start poking at it. Now Fenner, he's going to move out with these queens. I don't know if Great Torp's going to just roll right by these in a suicide attempt, suicide mission for these Hellions, but no, he's not going to do that. He's not going to do the QXC Hellion thing, right? And besides, with the Roach Warren finishing up, we already got some Roaches coming out for Fenner. It's not like those Hellions would have really had an opportunity to get much damage done before being wasted. So uh, we're going to see Great Torp now. 
finished up with his third over here. And uh, he's got the starport finished up here as well. So going to start to transition into bio, it looks like. But while he's working on that, we have some brooches out here now for Fenner to uh, really make sure he can defend against these Hellions and limiting where, really, Grey Torp can actually get into Fenner's territory. So Fenner, this time around, in a better spot than last one, mainly because this game has already lasted longer than game number one. Uh, but uh, Fenner's working on Roach. That is his uh, unit of choice here for the early game. But it, it, would, it would appear that that is just for a defensive purpose. And he just made those roaches to defend against the Hellions. Was it really necessary, maybe? I, I don't know. I, I asked this question because there's eight or seven roaches here. And perhaps maybe the queens on creep would have been enough to defend. It's hard to say, though. I mean, especially if he's trying to start mining here at this third. Having some roaches with that better mobility and just having a higher number of units to try to defend that third mining is pretty important. If he wasn't mining here at this third and he was still on two bases defending against the Hellion run by, that's easy, right? No ro no roaches needed at all. Not at all. Just a transfuse from three queens is going to be enough. But uh, right now we're going to have Grey Torp making his move once again, this time with some bio units. Now he doesn't have any medevacs with this just yet. But he is going to, oh, kill off that fourth hatchery. I did not see a cancellation there by Fenner. So Fenner losing that fourth base. That's a tough loss there. Great Torp getting a nice kill. And now he's going to actually go ahead and head for that natural here with these medevacs. And I don't think Fenner knows about it. He didn't see the medevacs earlier. So these first two medevacs arrived after that engagement. And now they have airlifted every bio unit into this natural. And Fenner... He's going to have to come here and defend. Well, he's going to see that queen die first. Now Great Torp going to focus down on that hatchery. Got some roaches here coming over, but with no speed, they're going to find it hard to defend against this. Oh, that natural has been taken out by Great Torp, and Great Torp now is going to just airlift those units to safety without losing anything, really. So uh, a dastardly turn of events here for Fenner. Losing two bases. He's going to try to retake uh, a third over here in this location on the left. He should be, of course, trying to rebuild the natural as well. We'll see when he decides to do it. He's got plenty of resources to make that happen, though, as he is floating about over a 1,000 minerals. But I suppose before he does anything about that, he has to defend against his drop once again, unload some bailings to take out some of those bio units, and uh, he is stabilized once again. But we're going to have Great Torp now focus on trying to wipe out some of those creep tubers on the ground. Gonna move back into the main base. Oh my gosh, Fenner moving outside to try to deny the creep uh, control there from Grey Torp. Now is seeing Grey Torp lift into his main base once again. And this is a big reason why Terran players love Bonnie so much is because it's just such a great map for dropping. And we kind of see Fenner here just playing catch up in every way with this drop flying all over the place with just the same units over and over again. And as Fenner's struggling to defend against this, we have a Bioforce moving in on that newly created third base. Fenner right now is going to have to bring his units quickly over there. I think Grey Torp here is uh, thinking that he may just get those over there in time. So he's going to not commit to attacking that third. But if he did, I felt like he could have perhaps even taken out that third base. Might have lost a few units in that effort though. So maybe the trade wasn't worth it to him. Oh, we have in the meantime a Ling run by here on the main base. Let's take a look at the workers killed. 14 actually by Fenner. He actually snuck those lings in there while all of that battling was going on at the top. It looks like Fenner actually was able to uh, get in some good damage done there on the bottom. So Grey Torp right now is uh, actually pretty even on the worker supply with Fenner despite the damage done. Now Fenner has had to rebuild two bases. He's got that natural up and running once more. And uh, he needs to spend that the, the minerals. Though. That's kind of what he needs to do. He's behind in supply right now overall in all these efforts to defend. And uh, we're seeing him just uh, outdone here in the macro. 185 to 142. Uh, supply lead for Grey Torp. Better right now. Uh, he has made some corruptors here instead of mutas, it looks like, to sort of handle the drops and things. And may look to turn those into Brewlords later on. But for now, uh, he's going to have to rely on some ling mostly Lings and Banes to deal with this bio army with some Hellbats in tow. We also have uh, what looks like the Enduring Locust uh, upgrade being researched. So Fenner is looking to make Swarm Host at some point. 
So I mean, you know, if you're gonna if you're a little behind in the macro is Zerg, Swarm Host is like a good option to put yourself back in a situation where you can drag out a game longer, buy yourself time, uh, get yourself some of that nice, nice suppressive fire to zone out the Terran, make it make it so that the Terran can't just easily walk wherever they want. Because that's kind of what Kratorb's been doing here. He's had some very good map control. He's been really out here on the center of the map in more for the last several minutes right now. Fenner has not been able to get a hold on things as far as map control. Now he's getting dropped again in the natural. Mainly Speed going to roll in here to try to deal with this. They do take out most of the Marauders. A few Marines left. And Fenner will be able to handle that before the natural goes down and gets attacked, really. Over here, though, we have Greatrop trying to split against a lot of these Veilings and actually, unfortunately, allows Fenner to do a lot of damage there on the ground. And Fenner is able to clean up the bulk of that. But now he's leaving these Roaches here maybe a little too long for his sake. And considering that he's had Roaches for this long, I'm kind of surprised that he has not gotten... Uh, the roach speed. I mean, he's been using slow roaches for 17 minutes right now, and if you're going to actually commit to roach for a little longer than that early game defense, getting roach speed is incredibly important. And the lack of that means the reinforcements come slower, they have a harder time chasing after bio, and we see that cal uh, just, you know, ending up in bases being taken out by Great Torque. We have the base uh, over here now gone, this third base. And so we see Fenner now back onto three. I called that the third base because, I don't know, it's just the order. The order is not important. It was one of the four. Now we're down to three. Fenner, though, is going to look to counterattack, though. Cannot leave that uh, base loss unanswered. He's moving in right now with just bailings. They do get some decent connections, but he just doesn't have the unit quantity down here that he needs to really finish off this army from Greatorb. Not even close. So Great Torp's going to back off now. We have another Ling Run by by Fenner over here. He's going to use these Ling Run Bys to actually just get in some good counter damage. This is not the this is the second time now this has happened, and Great Torp has lost a lot of units to these. A lot of workers, in fact. 28 to 8. And this is really keeping Fenner in the game right now. 28 ACBs killed by the Zerg and really relatively few, few killed by Greytorp. Greytorp has been more focused on killing bases than drones, which is just as well. Let's see if he can get another one here as Greytorp lands into this natural. Bailing so rolling in fairly quickly to defend against these bio units, and they will be able to finish them off. Medivacs may go down as well. These Corruptors actually able to take off a few as the boost on the Medivacs expires. So that's actually quite a loss there. From Great Torp. So while his initial few drops were very productive, these last two into that natural did not do nearly as much. That said, though, Great Torp has still been macroing a bit better than Fenner has. Fenner has been floating really a lot of minerals for quite some time, and that's not that's the last thing you need when you are behind in overall supply compared to your opponent. We you see this hatcher being taken out, and you know what? I can actually understand well, well why he isn't able to make as many units as he'd like because he's losing bases so often that he just doesn't have the larva he needs to be able to spend those resources efficiently. And the injects also not quite doing him any favors. That queen over at the third, pretty uh, pretty filled with energy there. But oh my gosh, uh, Bailing's on the ground, way outnumbered what Greatorp has over here. So he needs to back off and really fight where the Widow Mines are. If you move beyond where the Widow Mines are, you're not gonna be able to get in that uh, splash damage on those Lings and Banes and wear out those numbers before those units get to your bio army. So Greatorp uh, is gonna lose quite a few units because of that. But again, he's still staying up here with the supply advantage, 180 to 127. Now it's actually grown larger for Greatorp here as the late game is uh, in tow now here, 21 minutes in the game. Fenner's still hanging in there, but he's losing the bases left and right, not able to get on four base for very, very long at all. He's trying to build one right here at this at this fourth, at this goal, but uh, while he's able to defend it, we see this base denied again. Over here, Fenner is trying to take a base here as well. He's just got so many minerals, he can try to take all of these bases at once, and he's just, he's just running out of steam here, not a of larva to make units he needs. He tried to make Swarm Host earlier on, but hasn't been able to get these out as efficiently as he'd like to really secure some of these expansions he needs to get. He's got five sitting right here. Uh, again, another base denied. In fact, not even canceled this time here uh, for Fenner. It's just the losses have mounted so much for the guy. 
Greatorp really is is in command of this game here. And as Greatorp backs into this Widowmine nest, they're going to unload. Oh, Fenner sees them in time, is able to uh, keep the bulk of his Baileys away from uh, the Widowmines, taking them out. And uh, Greatorp still looking for that one big push to finally end things here. We do have quite a few swarm hosts here now for Fenner though, so he may be able to actually buy himself a little bit more time here as Grey Torp cannot easily push into that main. But everything else on the outside is fair game. And it's just it's just sort of avalanche here for Fenner in the last uh, like 10 minutes or so. So uh, it is GG again and Grey Torp is going to be taking a 2-0 lead now. So, very commanding macro game victory there by Greatorp. He is in a 2-0 lead. But as I said earlier, it's not over till it's over on Finite. There have been so many games where players just sort of, you know, they, they, they struggle the first two games trying to find their groove, trying to figure out what their opponent's, you know, their, their game plan is. And if Fenner's been paying attention, he knows that Grey Torp likes to go third CC, but doesn't actually do super early harassment by way of Reaper. So that may be perhaps an opportunity that Fenner can look to exploit going into game three, because it's it's really the second time now that he hasn't seen a single Reaper out. We'll see if he can make that happen. Uh, he's going to need to, because we're in match play right now. So let's see what map he's going to choose. I want to point out too that the guy chose Vani Research Station as his map, which is kind of interesting because that is a map that Terrans have a lot of fun on with drops, especially because of the position of the natural. And, you know, I, I don't know if I would pick that one. I don't know if I would have done that. And we saw Greator really just going nuts with the drops throughout the game. Not every single one did, you know, crazy damage, but the first few ones did, and those are the ones that matter the most because that's before Zerg gets up you know, a nice drone count on four plus bases. So if you can keep the Zerg back before that happens in the economy, well, you're going to set yourself up for a very, very nice mid game and late game, as you saw out of Great Tour. All right, so Deadwing LE this time around is going to be the map. Very different from the first two maps. Uh, much larger, much more macro oriented than Overgrowth or. Uh, Vani that we just watched on So we'll see if that's something uh, Fenner can take advantage of here as I set up this lobby and uh, Don't forget guys to Watch this on hitbox.tv. We got some nice polls going on right now. Who do you think will win? Is it gonna be Fenner? Is it gonna be Grey Torp? Fenner right now. He's got a lot of fans here in the chat 61.5% uh, have that guy making the comeback and you know what? I don't blame those people because on fight night, comebacks happen quite a fair bit. So it'll all have to start here with game number three because it is match point. And uh, we'll see. So yeah, you want to be watching this on Hitbox mainly because you get to take part in this poll. Uh, you get to take part in the chat. Especially with all those cool emoticons that you can do as a subscriber. You can post GIFs as a subscriber. These are things that you can do here that you can't on a competing streaming service. The features are really cool too. I just love how you can scroll down on that Team Gravity profile. And when you do that, the, the, the video screen sort of shrinks off to the side. Uh, that's just, you know, these little things that they're not really revolutionary but they all add together to create a nicer experience overall as far as observing uh, gameplay and esports and whatnot. So don't miss, on, don't miss out on that by just watching this uh, on an embedded website. But anyways, enough about that. Let's get into game number three here. This is match point here now, guys. And, well, it's do or die for this player here. This teal Zerg on the very bottom left of Deadwing LE. Uh, first two games, first game was, you know, just, it was just a, it was bad luck. Exceedingly bad luck. Uh, with his, his base is getting ransacked early on by Hellions. Last game, again, just the harassment by way of drops was too much for him to handle. 
But now that we're playing on Deadwing LE, perhaps this will be... This is a completely different kind of map. Maybe it'll allow the Zerg here to uh, find his comfort zone. So, we do have here, guys, the player representing Team Dank, I guess. <laughs> it is going to be Fenner. And against him is going to be the Red Terran on the upper left. Been putting up a very strong showing so far in these two games. But it's not over till it's over. It's up to him to see if he can close things out here and turn this into a shutout. A rare occurrence here on Fight Night. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the streaming and casting personality. Frequent contributor to WCS. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Great Tour. And you know, sometimes it's forget it's easy to forget that these players are actually pretty pretty talented in it of, the, in it of themselves. Because I mean, Great Torp, we see him talk on WCS or whatever, and it's like cool you cast. But the guy is also a GM player. He's Grandmaster in Terran, and this is after uh, being away from the game for so long. So there's no question about it. The dude is impressive. But is he impressive enough to hold off against this six pull drone all in? <laughs> well, there's a Reaper out, guys. My goodness. The time Fenner goes with a six pull drone pull all in, Great Torp makes a Reaper. Oh my gosh. And you know what? As his barracks is actually dying off, we have the SMEs coming here to repair it. And that's going to be a rough time to get a second Reaper out. And as long as Great Torp can micro this Reaper to kite back over and over again, he's going to take everything out. Everything here is going to fall to this one Reaper. Six kills. And like that, that's a GG, guys. Ballsy move from Fenner on Deadwing to metagame. The fact that a player wants to open up macro and it blew up in his face it really did it's just god both games great torp doesn't make a reaper and i almost i almost suggested this too i said fenner knows that great torp hasn't tended to open reaper maybe he can do something here to try to metagame that and he did but great torp makes a reaper because perhaps it being dead wing he wants to get in a, a quicker scout because he can't just send an SCV scout across the map to scout two possible spawning locations in time. So he makes a Reaper, and that's that. So I got to say, that's a 3-0 that's a victory for Greytorp. Um, very nicely done. And uh, I'm going to let these players know what's going on. So... Yeah, uh, Fenner's been here before, uh, for Fight Night, he played against, uh, gosh, I forget who it was, um, he played against Desro, uh, in an earlier Fight Night. Uh, let me talk to these players to make sure they understand what's going on with the, uh, the prize pool and stuff. Can't leave them hanging, because they're gonna move on to doing whatever. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you would think that you could metagame someone on Deadwing. The irony is, if it wasn't Deadwing, and maybe it was, you know, another two-player map, maybe Great Torp would have opened up Reaperless again, but, I don't know, sometimes these things in StarCraft, uh, but yeah, as I was saying about Fenner, he did play against Desro in an earlier fight night, lost barely 3-2, to two. And uh, I'm sure he would have loved to have this opportunity here, but you know, he's a cool dude um, Not the best day for him, but I'm sure we'll have him back again and maybe third time will be a charm But for now, uh, congrats to Great Torp. I'm putting on a strong showing man He is not just a caster. He is a player too, and he has really shown some good stuff here today All right guys, we still have our headlining match coming up here It's gonna feature two top Korean pros in heart as well as true gonna be a crazy TVZ guys 
So uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back, and uh, stay tuned.